Hello, everybody. Today, for social studies, we will be reading a story from Australia. It's called Animal Dreaming. And I do have a map here of showing where Australia is on the map. Australia is both a continent and a huge island. It's here in the South Pacific. Here's Asia, and here is Africa. Unfold the map. You can see that Europe is here, South America and North America are here. And then of course, way down at the bottom, there is Antarctica. All right, I hope you enjoy this story. Animal Dreaming, an uh, Aboriginal Dreamtime Story. Animal Dreaming by Paul Morin, and I, maybe he made the art too. Here is another map of Australia, and this tells a little bit about how the author learned this story. <clears throat> in a land called Australia, in the moment just before dawn, a boy and a man waited for the light of the last stars to fade from the sky. Miri climbed to his favorite perch in the tree. All night long, he had not been able to sleep. Today was Kip A Ara, the time Gadura, Miri's friend and elder, would take him into the outback and tell him about the time when Earth was first shaped. Today was the day of animal dreaming. <clears throat> Today we will visit the sacred places of our people, and tomorrow you will learn the stories about our beginnings, the animal dreaming, Ghidorah said in his deep voice. In the light of the new day, the two set off on walkabout to the howl of dingoes and the sound of their own footsteps. As they walked into the outback, Ghidorah pointed out special waterholes, rocks, and trees and told their stories. This is the home of Namargon, the lightning man, said Ghidorah as they came upon a rock outcrop. It is he who brings the thunder and rain. Our people believe the rocks and wind are alive and that you can hear them if you listen. At day's end, they stopped and Ghidorah pointed out the rock paintings on the stones surrounding their campsite. Ghidorah began, sit quietly, my friend, and see what the paintings tell you. Miri and Ghidorah talked on as the light faded, and then the two slept. At sunrise, Miri awoke to the sharp sound of clapping sticks and the elders singing. When Miri gazed up at the animals painted on the rock walls, they seemed almost alive. Ghidorah spoke. Long ago, at the beginning of the dream time, Waramurungundi, the great ancestor, gave life to the four-leggeds and the winged and the gilled ones. All lived together in the same watery place. Some swam while others splashed at the water's edge. Life was bountiful and all was well. But then Maori Wuti, the white-breasted sea eagle, grew to believe that he should rule as master of the wetlands. Next, Kukabora, the laughing kingfisher, decided that it should be the birds who ruled over all. Because they were greedy, Pelican and Egret quickly agreed. All the birds wanted the land for themselves. Soon birds 
from wide and far gathered in hundreds and then in thousands until the land grew dark in their shadow. With sharp beaks and outstretched talons, they attacked the land from above. The fish, animals, and reptiles cried out for help. Soon came the thunderous sound of animals of every sort rushing to their rescue from the four directions. Out of the mud flats came Ginga, the crocodile, and Al Muj, the rainbow serpent. There were bandicoots from the grasslands and wombats from the rainforest. Gundamen, the frilled lizard, came from the desert. All joined in the battle. Still the birds fought with all their might. But there were three who would not fight. Garndaij, the ancestral kangaroo, Balanga, the ancestral long-necked turtle, and Dinewan, the ancestral emu. Instead, they went off and talked about how they might bring peace to the earth. They came here to this place. They danced and sang as the moon and stars lit their way. Each one had a dream. <clears throat> Dinewan told of his dream of hundreds of bones all pointed toward the water. In his dreaming, Balanga had seen an enormous wave wash over the earth. Garndadij had dreamed of a digging bone. Upon wakening, she reached inside her pouch and found that bone. When she stabbed the earth with it, of its own power, the bone began to move toward the water, digging as it went. Soon the land was torn by a deep channel and thunder filled the air. A moment later, a huge tidal wave came up behind the cliff where the three stayed for safety. A strange light flickered in the air as the surging water settled, Ginga, the crocodile, turned himself into stone and his bumps became part of the landscape. Snakes, using their powerful coils, made hills and great stone archways. Baramundi, the great fish, created large water holes in which to swim. Deep mangro mangrove swamps gave shadows to the night even the birds painted feathered clouds across the sky. Before long, each of the animals had made their home in the land. The animals were at peace. And from that day on, when they dreamed, they lived their dreams. Miri watched as Ghidorah then traced his hand across the rock. These paintings contain the story of dream time. We keep the dreaming alive by listening, passing on our own story, and by leaving our mark on this rock. Miri understood, but knew it was time to return home. Someday, he knew, his own time would come to leave his mark here. Animal dreaming. I also get think that you might get a chance to watch another video that I've linked to. It is about the Aboriginal artists. Um, and this is the style of Aboriginal art. It's one of many styles of Aboriginal art. And it's usually made with lots of animal images and usually viewed from above 
and lots of patterning with dots or lines or stripes. So um, thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy the other video too. Bye.